Bollywood to Hollywood with Rao Rampilla. Today, we have a special guest from France, producer, director, and you name it, you got it, Olivier. Olivier Delaye. Did I say it right, Olivier? <laughs> Um, almost, yes. It's very <laughs> tonight. Well, there is a famous uh, British actor, Olivier. Um, so I can't be that wrong. Yeah, well, that... Uh, to our audience, uh, well, welcome to the show. Uh, it's my privilege to have you here, especially from France. Uh, we never had a French director on our show. Um, to our you. audience, Thank I'm going to introduce you. Because you are born in you are born in Paris, right? Yes. Yeah, you are born in Paris, lived in Paris. Now you live in southern France, uh, and you have a very varied education: law, history, art, art history, uh, everything else. So I was a lawyer myself, but uh, uh, but I don't have your varied background. Uh, you did everything that is possible, and you did. Uh, uh, commercials for 20 years. So, so uh, we're going to show you the audience so you were uh, one of your commercials so they know how good you are. <laughs> okay. uh, could, we, could we run the commercial first one? No, he is going to run the commercial. Леонид Комаровский, новый любимчик президента. Учился капитализму в Гарварде, теперь работает в Кремле. А серебряная игрушка? Откуда она? Французская, называется Клио. Как говорят французы, «Эля тудин гранде». Говорят, на Западе ее можно увидеть везде. Везде? Это роскошь везде? Коммунистический рай. This is your uh, commercial, uh, the Russian one. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then uh, you have done a, 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 you, you done hundreds of them, and you did yeah. one with Cindy uh, Crawford uh, too. But this one was very special because it was uh, the first one we did for Renault Clio. It was the first commercial uh, done for Renault Clio. But uh, more interestingly, uh -huh. it first commercial shot in um, in Moscow. Yes. Uh, for France, and it was shot in Russian, uh -huh. um, and it was shot uh, during the Glasnost in uh, in uh, ninety. Oh, and my Mikhail Gorbachev was there. It was very very interesting because uh, uh, so we were feeling that the empire was falling apart, but in the meantime, it was the real start of of uh, of. Uh, Kind of capitalism in uh, in um, Soviet Union, uh, Russia. Soviet Union, and, and it was very interesting because we were feeling that um, things may really explode. Or, um, so it was a good experience. And then and you I, then you moved on to the uh, feature films. From oh yes, but uh, ten years later. Uh, but you know, from that, in fact, at the same time, I started to go to shoot commercials in South Africa. Uh -huh. um, um, uh, not before, because uh, before Nelson Mandela was in prison. Uh -huh. and from '90, he was released, so we um, he was freed. So we uh, we decided to go to South Africa, and it was. A, a kind of similar uh, experience in South Africa with Russia. So in both uh, in both uh, countries, we were feeling that something was really happening, that it co it could go to a disaster. Uh, but something more interesting was happening in South Africa. It was that uh, Mandela and the ANC was really having a, a real philosophy and they were trying to avoid the bad blast which uh, was um, going to happen um, so that's why I decided to make a, a feature film there so it took me 10 years but it was my first feature film in uh, South Africa 
and then you mo- made a movie uh, wooden camera right it was this film that we, we only shot it in 2003 uh, but i've been working on it since uh, 1992 i i see a, a, a little uh, bit of a dickensonian uh, tinge <laughs> you know charles dickens uh, so uh, uh, when i saw the film I, i thought maybe it has the effect of uh, charles dickens on you but maybe without the uh, maybe without your knowledge or with your knowledge so i kind of sense you are a little bit uh, uh, conscientious there is a tinge of uh, political aspect to your uh, artistic uh, aspect uh, as artistic life uh, from commercial then moving on to Uh, feature films and uh, uh, things like that. Um, you know, I was on hunger strike in 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 India one time, uh, fighting against the uh, caste system. And when I met you in Tunisia, uh, so that made me connect to you more so, uh, especially when we talked about Sorbonne. Do we have that picture of us uh, 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 hunger strike? Uh, um, I was in Sorbonne uh, because of my political act- activism. So I was very, very interested about uh, Sorbonne. So when I visited uh, uh, Paris, so here we have, uh, that's our going back to my political activism back in New Delhi, we have five hunger strikers. And then because of that, when i went to uh, paris i visited the sorbonne campus uh, can we show yeah so here is the sorbonne campus uh, uh, it says sorbonne university de, de paris i was right across the uh, at the campus there was a store bookstore they showed me all the student protest movements and there was a statue of uh, some professor or somebody there and that's me smiling before the Sorbonne campus. Uh, uh, and then uh, there is also a statute of uh, uh, a, a liberty. I don't know how. It seems like the French has uh, love for liberty. <laughs> so uh, you gave us the statute of li- uh, well, liberty. So there is a statute of liberty there. Uh, so, uh, so my uh, interest is I was there uh, talking to some people And I was saying, uh, La Revolution, and it seems like uh, people are very much uh, settled, and they said, well, there is no more revolution in uh, France. Uh, uh, kind of disappointed, but uh, uh, so I, I, I see. So you were there at the Sorbonne. Uh, could, you, could you recapture things from your time? Uh, yes, yeah, so I was there. I was not at uh, the Sorbonne because I was too young. You know, in uh, May '68, I was 12, 12 uh-huh. years old. Uh, but I was living in Paris, and my father was working at a, an art gallery uh-huh. in, in Saint Germain des Prés. And Saint Germain was really it's close to Sorbonne, and it's really where everything was happening. So we had news every day, uh-huh. and a very clear uh, recollection of, of um, what was happening at this time. And it was really, even for a little boy like me, uh, who was in a, I was in a quite a strict um, college, uh, and, and uh, it was a religious uh, college, and it was very funny because also there, everything started to, to move and so on. And it was a, a delicious time of, uh, of freedom, of imagination. I remember uh, my father was uh, helping a lot of uh, students of, um, of uh, art uh-huh. uh, who were bringing to him posters with uh, slogans against the goal for the revolution and so on. And it was always full of humor, um, very artistic. Um, very funny, it was very, sometimes very incorrect, um, so it was great, it was really a great, uh, a great time. Is that how you got into the art, uh, instead of going into a law or uh, some other aspect? 
some of these early things may have influenced you? No, I, I, my involvement in art, in fact, started before that. Uh, from when I was 10 years old or 9 years old, I started to go to museums and galleries and so on, and I was uh, spending a lot of time in Louvre and in all the museums and so on. Um, so I was really involved on that. Of course, I also like this, um, this part of the, the revolution of uh, 68. Um, but you know, we say revolution, but if you compare with uh, our big revolution of um, 1789, mm -hmm. it's something really very, very, very different. Uh, because um, uh, in 89, um, and the years after, it was very violent, and uh, many people were killed and so on. Uh, and it's absolutely not the case in 68. And I think it's one of the big successes of, uh, of the revolution of 68, is that uh, really things, the society changed a lot, uh, but there was almost no uh, death. I think that um, uh, during the whole revolution, there was only five uh, people who five people died, and um, more or less it was more accident than um, than really uh, uh, people killing other people. Um, and, and it was, I think, there was uh, uh, two two policemen, um, two students. On one, it was an accident where nobody knows how uh, on, on what exactly happened. And I think it was quite a, a big success of everybody. So meaning that uh, there was some violence, uh, but also there was, from both sides. Uh, the decision was made not to use too much violence and not to kill anybody. And, and from the beginning, uh, and thanks to, on one side it was uh, Daniel Cohn Bendit. I don't know if you yes, know. Yes, uh, Daniel. Now he is the president of Green Party, right? He lives in Berlin or something. Yeah, he's in. Uh, he lives in France. Or in fact, it is between France and, um, and Germany. Yeah, uh, he always lived between France and Germany. He was and kicked out, right? During so, uh, after the revolution or something, he escaped to Berlin. Yeah, but during the revolution, he, he did not escape to Berlin. He went to Berlin uh -huh. uh, just after a couple of after the first week, and and uh, then the French government forbade him to to come back. Uh, saying you are not French, so you are, you are not allowed to come back to the territory. Oh. And one day at the Sorbonne, as there was a big meeting and so on, Convendit arrived and he said, "No problem, I don't care about this, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here." And and it was a big success for for him. Uh huh. Well, here is a clip uh, about the uh, the student protests. Uh, we're going to run this clip just for the to refresh your memory also to show it to the audience to refresh their historic uh, memory Après plusieurs autres villes aussi différentes que Rome, Berlin, Ouest ou Varsovie, l'agitation étudiante s'est manifestée à Paris. de fièvre a surpris par son ampleur et le degré de sa violence. Une violence qu'on n'avait pas connue ici depuis longtemps. So that's, uh, I, I, I suppose that refreshes some of your memories, um, even though it's a clip from 68 May. 
Um, I have, uh, uh, because we used your student model when we were uh, striking and fighting against uh, Indian ap caste apartheid. Uh, we used your model clearly because uh, uh, the Communist Party said, Indian Communist Party, uh, students are not a, a, a revolutionary class. Uh, only workers are st a revolutionary class. So students can't uh, conduct the revolution. But uh, the French student movement, it was very unique in that uh, students uh, uh, have joined the workers, even though the Communist Party of uh, France uh, controlling the unions did not encourage them, uh, allow them to participate, but uh, workers anyhow participated. I think that's how you, your father and others uh, got involved. Uh, but kind of, uh, they kind of betrayed the struggle, you know, revolution at the time, I think. I don't know, what do you think? Uh, you know, in fact, uh, it really started with the students. I'm, I'm not with the workers and so on, also the syndicates, so the union, uh, they were against uh, the movement at the beginning. It was really a student movement. And um, as you said, also unions were saying that um, students are not, uh, they, have, they had no political uh, knowledge and so on, so it was uh, not to them to make that kind of, of thing. But it went very, very quickly. And um, it was, it really started with, um, uh, you know, uh, De Gaulle, mm -hmm. who George was Gaulle. president yeah. at the time, uh, in January uh, 68, he felt that there was something, and he, uh, something was in the air, and he asked to his Minister of Education to make a, a, a kind of report of um, what was the situation of, of uh, the students. And so they made what we call a white book. Uh, so it was a result of this um, of this um, study about uh, the situation, mm -hmm. and it was presented in in um, in a university. And uh, at the end of uh, the presentation, uh, so it was the minister who presented that. Daniel Kurt-Bendit went to the guy, to the minister, and he said, "But you know." It's, I've read your 60, 600 pages, and it's all bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, you are not talking about sexuality of uh, the students, and sex, sexuality is for us a main issue. And the guy, he was so astonished that uh, somebody was talking to him like that. I said, but um, if you have problem with your sexuality, go on and go on swim in, uh, in um, fresh water. It will be good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Convened immediately answered to him, oh, it's exactly the kind of answer that you get in a fascist country. Uh -huh. and, and then it was <laughs> really because it was so astounding. Nobody had spoken like that to, to a minister until uh, this day. And it was really showing that something was, uh, was really happening. Uh -huh. And it was here on the student side that uh, things were happening. Um, and it was really very, very uh, so that's what made it very, uh, very interesting. So the very interesting thing is that from the beginning, and uh, because, uh, so, so, so at this time, De Gaulle was a president. Uh -huh. De Gaulle was always carrying the, the, the grandeur of France on his shoulder. Uh, he was, uh, but he was uh, not accepting that his authority uh, could be uh, played with like that. So he was ready to get the army um, killing uh, those uh, the, some students to, to, to um, make them come in order. And thanks uh, to Pompidou, who was uh, at this time the, the, the first minister, and with two of his men, he did not uh, make what de Gaulle wanted to, to, to do. And he immediately established a link between the, 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 the Minister of Police and uh, the Convendit and the, the other revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. So they had, they had a, a, a phone between them. And they, from the first day, in fact, they were talking. And Pompidou did not want to have, uh, to have any people uh, killed. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So he wanted to get back to some kind of order. But in a way, also, he was feeling that some of the, 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 the wishes of the students were right. And also those people, I mean the ministers and so on, they had their, uh, their children among the, 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 the students and so on. So they were feeling that something had to happen. So, and it was a really good thing that De Gaulle was, not, uh, was put a little bit apart by Pompidou, and that it's Pompidou who drove the operation, because with De Gaulle, it would have been a disaster. With Pompidou, it has been, a, let's say, a, a kind of dream. Well, he became a, a, a president afterwards, right? Yes. Subsequently. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, the, the, I'm trying to drive my point uh, between these uh, uh, unions and the communists. Uh, there was a clip, uh, I think a PBS clip. Uh, uh, let, let me uh, put it on that clip and see you will understand what I'm talking about. Uh, um, the okay, rift will, between I, the I union, uh, communist something. party and the students. Yeah, I will add something about uh, what was said at the end of the, the, the previous clip uh -huh. about about violence, uh -huh. uh, because uh, you know we were very much shocked, effectively by by this violence. It, it was quite violent, but as I said, in one month we had only uh, five uh, dead people. Four years before, yeah, or six years before, uh -huh. so Algerians had um, uh, we throw. I mean, when we I I say we. The police, the French police, throw into the Seine, the river Seine, hundreds of Algerians who died. Uh -huh. Well, they, um, can, they cannot do the same thing to their own kind, right? <laughs> yeah, but it was done in France by the, the, by the French police, mm -hmm. and it was not... Uh, so when the guy at the end of the clip you have heard say, oh, we have uh, never seen that kind of violence, uh, no, we had seen much more violent things, um, and it was just a couple of years uh, before. Uh -huh. Well, let's let's see this clip. Uh, clip. Okay. Uh, the clip is about confrontation, Paris, 1968. Industrial societies throughout the world are in ferment following two decades of growth and prosperity. As in the early 19th century, unrest begins in urban centers of culture. Berkeley, New York, Tokyo, Rome, Milan, Berlin, Prague. The ferment originates among the marginal, among those considered to be wards and dependents of society. France, the mother country of revolution, seems immune. So, what you got to say for that? <laughs> the mother country, France. Um, yes. You know, we can go on talking about it uh, for a long, long time. Absolutely. But uh, uh, I, think, I guess we have the time limitation, so we have to stop some point somewhere. So, uh, thanks for coming on to my show, and thanks for educating me and uh, our audience uh, about your impressions about Sorbonne and the student revolution and the future. What it may be, especially after this. Uh, 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 I mean, something else is happening about this Greece also. Now you mm -hmm. have just with Charlie, now Greece, there is a new leftist government uh, and they are protesting the economic issues. Uh, so we don't know which direction the world is going to go, So, uh, especially the Western world. So mm -hmm. uh, do you have any last words about that? or? Uh, should I say thank you and goodbye? <laughs> uh, 
uh, I thank you. I thank you for your interest, and uh, also we we uh, it would be very interesting uh, to um, hear more about your protests in in uh, in India. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, uh, I would like to to learn more about it. Uh, so maybe next time we we yeah talk I, I I I wrote a play about it Gandhi and Untouchables but I couldn't put everything uh, there but it's one day we'll sit down and talk over a cup of uh, say a gla glass of wine <laughs> okay. uh, but thank you uh, thank you very much so let's end this. Uh, 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 there was a, 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 when I went there, the only protest I saw was by uh, sex trade workers. There is a clip. Uh, so I was from the balcony. I was, uh, so they were fighting for some equal rights or some trade union rights. Uh, kind of looks odd, feels odd for an American or for a third world person, but it shows so your society has gone uh, further than most of the other societies. But but uh, thank you. Thank you very much for being on this show, show and thanks for bringing the memories of the Sorbonne live. Um, okay. Until next time, uh, Bollywood to Hollywood. Uh, thank you. I thank you very much, Rao. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Après plusieurs autres villes aussi différentes que Rome, Berlin, Ouest ou Varsovie, l'agitation étudiante s'est manifestée à Paris.